I'm on fire over here, lads. Come on, I need some back and forth. Come on, what do you got for me? What do you got for me? Now make it quick. Make it funny. <laughs> you! Jeez, that's disappointing. No, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Disappointed. The four skins. Call me when it's fucking do it, lad. Fucking do it. I'm Stephen Gillen, and today I'm going to do a deep dive and react to Guy Ritchie's classic, The Gentleman. Ching, ching. Fletcher. Buenos tardes, Raimundo. <laughs> I have to say, I love this film as well. Guy Ritchie is such an exponent of the art. Fletcher, played by Hugh Grant. This is, uh, I would definitely say, one of Hugh Grant's best roles ever. And they start straight away with the conflict. It's great. What the fuck are you talking about? If you would be so kind as to furnish me with 20 million British pounds, I will give you everything. And what you see here in the introduction is setting the premise straight up. Guy Ritchie is so good at this. He's using all the, all the approaches here, the cinematography, the conflict, the uh, content-led and performance-led dialogue, really punchy, which sets you up, pulls you in, wants you to know more. You Grant, class act in this. I'm gonna tell you a story to demonstrate why my quote is my quote. You play a game with me, Ray? You see, the dialogue really pulls you into this, and uh, uh, Charlie Unham, he plays, he plays a great role all the way through this, driving this script. And this bit is great with the coach, Colin Farrell. Hilarious. What is the smell of we in here? The fuck is this joke, man? Don't stand near me, son. Now, if you're gonna stab, stab, trigger. Don't, you know, dance. Don't dance about. If your lad's gonna go, if you're gonna do it, do it. Don't do it, do it. The four skins! The red skins! Fuck! You! Jeez, that's disappointing. No, no, not that. Disappointed. The four skins. Come on, baby. <laughs> you are embarrassing yourself. It's great. This is just, that's fucking disappointing. I expected more. Now look what fucking happened to you. Do you think the youth of today are more likely to carry knives than the youth of your day? Or do you think not much has changed? Not much has changed, I suspect. Do you know what I mean? Apart from um, the different generations, they get a lot faster. You know, and they... So, so they care a bit less, I think. Some of the old school values, certainly the women back in the day, they get a little bit more diluted as we, as we go on. Now, Laura, your father's asked us to bring you home. She's not going anywhere. I love this scene, I do as well, you know, and it's so masterful to have, of course, the fallen daughter, which is heroin addict, which is away with these idiots, you know, having a really bad time because they've gone to take her out of that. She doesn't come from that world. And the set, you know, the set design in this is, is wonderful. I'm, I'm lost. Am I in the bath with Barry White's finger in my missus? Be quiet, Brown. You were lost long before Barry White walked in. It's a great, uh, great use of humour, do you know what I mean? But I have to say, you know, there's been many times I've even, you know, I've been in places and I've been through circumstances and I've had to do similar things, I kid you not. And I've took the piss too, this is what you do. You kind of you lighten it in that way because you know what you're capable of, you know what you've gone there for, you know what you're going to do. So it's that, playing with the situation really. As, uh, as we see here. It's 
great seeing this as well because it shows about the drug abuse and just how fucked up it is, you know, with this brown gear and all the rest of it. You know, and of course he's going to get a few slaps. He was always going to get a few slaps there anyway. And that's the whole point of, of, of controlling the situation when you go into these kind of things with people. Like I said, you know what you're going to do. So, very authentic. I mean, at the end of the day, he's gone over the top. You know, if you was going to try something, then you'd really try it. That was pathetic, I have to say. Didn't even look like he had any strength in his bones then, did he? I'm sure you're all roared, man. <laughs> Gangsters, proper naughty boys. How much? Full bag. Four How bags. about you give us that bag? Four grand. I'd be gone anyway. It's not gonna work like that, son. Look. <laughs> So he just lost his four grand there. Should have been, should have been quicker on the draw. Smarter on the, smarter on the twist of the card. We got it wrong, didn't he? You either come with me or Tony here. He's going to make you come with me. You're in my office under my roof. It's not your position for Tony to do anything other than to fuck. You've got try eye, try eye, try eyes. The uh, the antagonist in this because again, Guy Ritchie, what he does is is he's you know he pulls in. Um, uh, there's always a lot of stake, you know, and then he pulls in these memorable characters, you know, and then there's always the people uh, against, against Matthew McConaughey, and there's the people who want to buy the business, right? So straight away he's setting up the friction. Dry Eye, of course, is the leader of these guys, not to be trusted, another great memorable character. Whatever it is, I've lost my patience. I'm telling you, I will squeeze this trigger and Tony will be no more. Tony. And there's a moral of the story there. When someone is so calm like that and they're holding a gun like that and they tell you that, I'd believe them. So crazy people who are shouting and hollering, you might want to think he's bluffing. But this is a great scene too. Of course, he's only got two bullets. You know, and this is great at the end because you've got Matthew, Matthew McConaughey, Pearson, Michael Pearson. Everyone's after his puff business. Everyone. And they, they uh, Guy Ritchie holds it right out to the last, the last scene in the film at just what happens in The Gentleman, of course, which he leaves open. Don't want to spoil it for you. You've got to watch it. But it'll pull you from... Act one, act two, act three, right the way to the very end. A very driving, fast-moving script. You're all right, Big Dave. You're in safe hands now. No need to panic. And I love the coach in this. He's probably, he's probably my, my, my most favourite character. Okay. He's got that Irishness about him, and of course he brings everything with him. All the comedy, all the ways of being. Great character. My favourite character in the film. I believe you're a reporter. Another thing I would say about this is, you know, it has to be said about the gentleman, it is about the cannabis business, very lucrative business, and people have made absolute fortunes of that. Should be legalised, I think, in many ways, right, you know? But um, I have to say, my experience of organised crime and the game, you know, of, of cannabis is, it's a different clientele, as you see here. You know, you get a lot of the posh guys, a lot of the fire out guys, a lot of the... But it is a real different clientele who work in the market with this drug. Of course, when you go into the hard drugs, you know, the terrible twins or the class A's, heroin, crack, cocaine, all, these bring a different kind of violence and a different kind of organised crime people, different kind of villains, and a, a, lot of, a lot of violence comes with that. So... My experience, definitely, very authentic, because there are different, different people involved in these different markets and these drugs in the, you know, in the real world of organized crime in the market. But of course, in The Gentleman, what you've got is a lot of money, top of the tree, big business, a lot at stake. So of course, where there's the money, this brings the violence too. So it's Heathrow Airport, please, Terminal 3, and thence to sunny California. Buenas tardes.
Fletchermondo. <laughs> One of the stylists, a mid goal. You know, and this is great. It's kind of a bit of a pull off from the Long Good Friday. Bob Hoskins, same kind of setup he gets in, but at the end, but of course he's got him here. And it's a wonderful twist, a wonderful turnaround for this really memorable, uh, vibrant character in the gentleman, Fletcher. What rating do I give Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman for authenticity? I've got to give him an eight and a half. You know, it's definitely up there again. Um, you know, he always does his research well. It's, it's, it's well scripted, great, great characters, very performance, uh, content driven film. Eight and a half, I think it's very good. What do I give the uh, amazing film, gentlemen, for cinematography, uh, character development, plot, and so forth? I'd give it an eight, you know, I'd give it an eight. I loved watching it again, refreshing my memory on it, and it's certainly gonna be up there on the list of all time Guy Ritchie classics. I hope you enjoyed uh, me deep diving into The Gentleman. A lot of people have been asking for it. I really send a lot of blessings to you guys out there. Thanks for uh, watching the channel. My name's Stephen Gillen, of course. Uh, I have my own um, dark days in organized crime, serving 17 years as a category A prisoner. If you wanna know more about me and my story, look in the description underneath. And uh, I wish you very well, guys, on your journey. Take care, good luck, and God bless. And don't forget, any films that you want me to react on or have a look at, please put them in the comments underneath.